Nano One was awarded ten million dollar. It says here non dilutive, non repayable contribution from Sustainable Development Technology Canada. That announcement came out today. Dan, tell us more about this, please. Well, listen, STTC has been a tremendous supporter of Nano One over the years. This is our third project with them. The other two um, having been successfully or, or mostly uh, almost complete. Actually, one of them is still underway. And we're layering on a third one, uh, $10 million, uh, as you say, of non-dilutive, non-repayable funds from STTC. So this is aimed directly at uh, the facility uh, we have in Quebec lithium uh, pr uh, to produce lithium iron phosphate. It is um, uh, is earmarked to fast track and convert that plant. So, the, as, as your listeners will recall, we acquired that facility uh, late last year and are in the process of converting it to the one pot process. So, this really enables us to fast track that. This leverages, uh, first of all, the really the high quality acquisition that we made of this plant. Um, uh, leverages the people we have in place there and really amplifies uh, our expansion plans. It will give us a much clearer path to uh, industrial scale pil piloting, which will lead to a demo scale of production uh, and revenues uh, to follow. It, uh, of course, creates, it maximizes shareholder value, really leverages um, what is already in there. And, uh, and of course, um, makes every shareholder dollar go that much further. So uh, we have a very loyal and a dedicated uh, shareholder base, and and that has uh, has been a, a big part of this story as well. And then lastly, um, this really helps us accelerate our strategic growth with partners like Rio Tinto, newly announced Lithium Battery, who are a, a, an LFP battery producer in the U.S. And we continue to leverage and grow and develop the relationship we have with our undisclosed automotive OEM, who many of our listeners will be uh, well aware of. And so all of these partners are going to be uh, actively participating with us um, at the facility in Kandiac and really to help strengthen uh, those relationships, the supply chains, and ultimately uh, lead to the kind of offtake we're going to need for our expansion plans. Okay, so very everybody out there from Investor Intel, Again, this is to help with the transformation of the Candiac uh, lithium iron iron phosphate plant in Quebec, correct? And accelerate your uh, consortium uh, partners with Rio Tinto Lithium Battery and your undisclosed OEM. Is that correct? That, that is absolutely correct, yes. Okay. So you've had a number of pieces of news. You've been very busy here this new year, uh, Dan. You also put out news about your uh, an update on your LFP operation, which is which of course is your lithium iron phosphate facility. Can you tell us anything else? Would you like to add anything else uh, to that update for us, please? Just it just that since we since we've taken possession of the facility since we closed the acquisition uh in early November um we have been doing um uh taking the engineering work that we did up front we've been uh, decommissioning uh, equipment that we're not going to be using and creating more space we are also leveraging the equipment that's currently in place there doing we've started preliminary evaluation of our process at large scale and uh, thus far, uh, things look uh, pretty promising. Uh, we, uh, we've we started using some of the large reactors in place there and uh, and are, uh, you know, have, have encouraging results. Nothing in detail that we can share yet, but uh, we hope to be uh, coming to uh, the uh, to our, uh, our public and our listeners with uh, more detailed updates as that progresses. But all I can say is that it's going very well. So you've got a non-dilutive investment. You have a community where you have most of your infrastructure in place already. Uh, how fast can you get everything to the next level? What are the uh, milestones you're attempting to achieve here in 2023? Because you seem to be moving at a remarkable pace to me. Yeah. So, so look, the first thing we're, we're, we're doing, obviously, we're, we're doing the evaluation work and the, um, and the engineering work to bring this facility uh, up to a, a level where we can pilot, um, uh, we can ship 
materials for third party evaluation. We validate those materials. We're looking to get ultimately to get offtake out of this uh, this pilot plant that will then lead to a much larger scale up. So those are really the, the really main objectives. I think what you can look for is uh, stronger strategic relationships, more details on those relationships, and ultimately a little bit uh, better sight lines on, on first revenues. What are your near-term catalysts? It's a great question. Um, obviously, um, we've we've got a lot to to do in the plant to get it up to speed. But we are building uh, partnerships actively um, with uh, up and down the supply chain. So this would be with the OEMs, with uh, mining companies as suppliers, with the the midstream, like we've done with uh, with BSF and 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 Umacore as well. Um, so you can expect more of these kinds of relationships um, with uh, with the strategic uh, with the strategic. You can expect a more uh, detail on uh, on work we're doing with the government to build out a wholly kind of Canadian supply chain. Uh, lots of stuff um, on the go, uh, and obviously can't tell you exactly when those announcements are going to come out. But they are uh, they're super super important to uh, to to setting the stage uh, this year, uh, throughout the year, and obviously um, uh, preparing for uh, sort of large scale expansion in the coming years. Are you going to be attending PDAT? Yes, I will be at PDAC. Uh, there are a number of uh, activities underway there. I'll be uh, there's a lot of work with the government, uh, working with their uh, with Invest in Canada, with their uh, their network, and that uh, will include the minor, the large integrated miners, the junior miners. That will include uh, the automotive OEMs and the large chemical companies. Uh, they bring a tremendous amount of. Uh, uh, of strength to the uh, to the to the boardroom and the meeting rooms, and that uh, is really the, the main objective: is to get in front of uh, everyone we're talking with with the government. Well, as always, thank you, Dan, for the update. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure.